Well, good evening, guys, my friends on YouTube. Hope you're doing great. I've been waiting far too long to make this video, uh, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> One month too late, yes. But better late than never, or better late than seldom. Depends on how you see it. <laughs> Anyways, now I need to deal with my dendrobium nobody type. Sunny eyes, which is sitting in that cabinet. Lord knows why I put it inside a cabinet. It really doesn't require it to be in very, very high humidity. But I just did. I, I thought I keep all of my dendrobiums inside here. I don't know why. So let's bring the beauty out from the cabinet. Dendrobium nobly, but sunny eyes. Yeah, as a nobly type it is, it's got the Dendrobium nobly species in his heritage somewhere back. And now my dog is drinking again. Yay! Anyways, <laughs> now I think I'm gonna give you a little short clip on when she arrived here, what she looked like, and what I said about her, the info and stuff. Might as well just add the old clip. I see no point and no reason to repeat myself. Yes? A lovely scented one. Some yellow to the lip. And this beautiful black, almost black, very, very dark purple patch to the center of the lip down to the throat. Not so bad in size either. And this orchid puts out a very, very nice display. Uh, but it's probably been uh, out for quite some time. You can see one bloom is fading. But I got it for a good price, so I shan't complain. Nothing new coming. Three cut canes, on the other hand. <laughs> but there will be. Quite wobbly in the spot. This was the last one, so... Well, after you saw her, and saw her beautiful flowers. Yeah, I think you like her just as much as I do. And I also have the um, Dendrobium nobly species. Yes? It sits here. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to imagine that these two guys are related. I mean closely related the species um, this one is sitting in some kind of moss and bark mixture with a little bit of Spanish moss some other stuff growing on top <laughs> I think it looks pretty but I, I should remove it but I do think it looks pretty so sorry <laughs> but this one uh has been through a little bit of trouble since i got her yeah a couple of scale insects got to her but they seem to have vanished yes by now that's great very great and the pseudobulbs are very very plump and beautiful i've been watering her quite frequently I didn't really know her growing schedule. All I've heard was that she was quite finicky, the species, nobly species, and that she should give her a severe winter rest with absolutely no water and loads of sunlight during the winter month if you want to see some flowers. And that she's finicky and difficult to grow and especially difficult to bloom. Yes. Uh, I'm going to give you a little clip on what she looked like when I got her and what I said about her. It's the Dendrobium nobili species. It's from the very same area as many of the other Dendrobiums are. 
southeastern part of Asia, Himalaya, and that area. Yeah, quite widely spread. It's a widely spread species. It's been growing on with one pseudobulb a year. I read that the species are known for dropping all of the leaves. During the resting period, this one didn't drop its leaves. So she's blooming from an old cane, it seems. Well, these are leafless. This one uh, is a bit uh, more complicated to grow, they say. The nobly hybrids, which you can find at the local garden centers most of the times. Look at her. So gorgeous. And it's just lovely scented as well. Well, back to the hybrid. I got this sunny eyes in late May. She was in bloom. Yeah, they usually are. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't very, very pleased with her f yeah, full appearance. Three canes. Yeah, that's correct. Loads of blooms. That's correct. Which lasted for about three more weeks. At the end of June, she had finished her blooming already. She will say shortly after, she started on her new growth here. One, two, and a third one coming there as well. I was complaining a little bit about her having only three canes and two old cut ones. And that she was a bit wobbly in her pot and everything. And, but it was the last sample, so and I really needed to have this orchid, so... Uh, what do you do? What can you do? What's the right card to bet on? <laughs> Three new growth. That's, that's a very great development. So she started on her new growth in the beginning of July, just after she finished her blooming. Yes? And it's quite funny that these two guys' blooming pattern differs as much as they do. The species Dendrobium was in bud in late February and opened up its flowers shortly after to last for about four weeks. So at the end of March, this one was overbloomed. Didn't do anything until the 1st of August when she first started to show signs of any life. Hey. I've been watering her um, with loads of uh, nutrients ever since she finished her blooming. So, that doesn't seem to have hurt her. Yes. Well, that took a very, very long time to create. That differs a lot. And <clears throat> obviously, a whole lot in size. <laughs> well, as the wise men say, the noble should be fertilized and watered a lot until late August. Then you should reduce the fertilizer. And come November, you should reduce the watering until zero to none in December. Until you see some buds. Then you can increase the watering a little bit. Yeah. That's what to say about this, this nobly uh, species. Uh, that you should provide it very, very, very good light. The best light you can give him during the dry winter month. And a bit cooler. Yeah. Under 20 degrees. <laughs> Even more. If you're able. That's what to say. Uh, this one needs to be fertilized a lot now and watered with an abundance of water, and it's August. So, it doesn't follow the schedule that everybody talks about, so it's got its own schedule. <laughs> so, all I can do is look at what it's doing. Now it's in growth, I need to order <laughs> until it's reached its full potential. And perhaps 
I can give it less fertilizer and less water. And also depending on the temperatures. Is it cooler? I need to give it a little bit less water. But not until this one, this new growth, is good and plump and large. So, what about this hybrid? Doesn't need all that much light during this growing period. I've heard medium light is totally enough for her. Yes, but a lot of water, a lot of fertilizer during this period. So these guys grow so well, well enough to reach the size of the oldest kings. These guys need to grow very well before you stop fertilizing and water. Come Christmas, you can give it a little bit better light and a little cooler temperature surrounding it if you're able, under 20 degrees would be preferable, I've heard, and no fertilizer. Until spring arrives and you see a couple of buds forming, that's when you can start spraying, perhaps give a little, little tiny, teeny, weeny bit of water. Some say that you should fertilize it immediately when you see buds coming. Some say that you shouldn't, but they all seem to agree on that you should start watering a little bit when bud starts forming to the canes. But, well, well, who knows? Who knows how this gal will react in my conditions? All I know is that she's in very, very good active growth now. You can see beautiful green root tips. But I'm not so sure what's in this pot. I haven't reported her yet. So, um, that's what I'm up to today. Looks like, yeah, she's sitting in this kind of, yeah, looks like peat moss, or, yeah, <laughs> some kind of soil to me. It easily falls off when I scratch underneath here. I can just dunk it off, <laughs> just like this. <laughs> now. Uh, I'm not going to be fierce. Look. Beautiful root tips. But, uh, well, you wonder why can't she stay in this? She's growing so nicely. Yeah. Lower temperatures, some water, which won't dry out. Since the medium is far too water retentive. What will happen? Yeah, the roots will die off. And in worst case, even the pseudobulbs. So I will not take the chance. So I'm going to wash her off. Oh, good roots. I like them. Already prepared a little bath for her. Yeah, not so bad. And I would like to have keep her in a transparent pot so I can see the roots and draw in no mix. So I just found the perfect pot for her. One with uh, handmade holes, tailor-made holes with my soda pen. Almost the very same size. See? Yeah. <laughs> Identical. So I can put it back inside the pot and cover the holes when the orchid needs the moisture at its most. And get her out from there when the orchid needs to dry out faster. Uh, you see my point? So I finally found purpose for all of these Miss Orchid Girl pots I made. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use a mixture of a whole lot of stuff. Grow stones, perlite, bark, coconut husk fiber chips, sphagnum moss, 
and now a little bit of a little bit more bark Thanks. and let's not forget the charcoal hey that sticks so there's a little bit of coconut husk fiber a little bit of peat which is used for sitting in so it's going to be quite a watery tempting media but still it's going to be a little bit airy so she can dry out as well and give Ruth a chance to get some airiness around them as well. They like to sit in a cozy pot and cozy pot there shall be a cozy pot even this time. It's a bit difficult to get the medium down and I should have done it one month ago before the roots had uh, grown this large and long now they're quite fragile and easily break but I didn't have time to do it I needed to take care of thrip extinction so I thought that was a whole lot more uh, important so good space to grow on there and quite similar to a soul medium so it won't give this orchid a shock <laughs> yes and the medium is able a little bit more able than the old medium to dry out if necessary And I can see the roots and see what they're doing. Yes, which I couldn't before. So it's a lot better with a transparent pot. So let's stay corrupt. Use these things, little clips or whatever it is. Still. Now I need to tie these new guys onto something. Oh, I guess I'm gonna tie them to uh, <laughs> to the old canes. Why not? It's just as good as any steaks to keep them upright for a while. I can always change it later. And this little tiny teeny weeny thing oh, I, can, I can try to tease it already at this early stage doesn't matter I think it's all right so goodly good maybe oh no, this guy to the back side so I cannot see it So that was a good reporting, quite easy, and I'm going to do the lifting test, yeah, of course it works. And I'm going to give it a good flush, to flush out some excess debris out from the pot. So I flushed it until the water it pours out from the pot is clear. And it still fits this lovely, lovely, lovely decorative container. Yes, I'm going to show you guys something else in my cabinet. So, let us look at it. Let's see now <laughs> if I can find the correct plant. <laughs> Which one of them is it? E, E, E. Oh Lord, it's been growing on so nicely. Um. What is it? All right, never mind. It's a community pot. 
don't know if you saw that video, but I did a video on my community pot. Look. This is a uh, little, little cakey from a friend's Dendrobium lilac. Yes, nobile lilac. It's a very, very commonly occurring <laughs> Dendrobium nobile type orchid. Had one cane when I got it. Now, I produced this one. Beautiful growing. Or perhaps it had two. I'm not sure. But now it's got four canes and a little cakey growing. Quite, yeah, quite a good size cakey growing to the side. This really growing on nicely. And what on earth is all this? Let's see, a uh, lot of Jesse eye is growing very nicely. Uh, a film, the one that was quite doomed, is now not too doomed, looking great. Better than ever. Ah, I'm happy. Yeah, Community Park is doing all right as well. And you know, guys, the uh, Dendrobium nobili hybrids are, yeah, have been generated more or less in Japan so uh, and on Hawaii. So, um, yeah, now you know that too. I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell. But no, I didn't. So now we know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but thank you guys for watching this Dendrobium nobili type reporting. Sunny eyes, as a matter of fact, a very commonly occurring variety. And give it a like, subscribe, share, and we should talk soon. Bye bye.